Federer for invitation and also uh, and also the uh, SEPF University for this. This is a, this is a real pleasure for me. And uh, today I'm gonna talk about the roadside safety barrier system evaluation and design. You know this this is a very interesting topic for students for both you know mechanical and as well as the civil engineers. So because we coming up with some sort of the simulation aspects that we both you know civil engineers and also mechanical engineers doing that uh, mostly are coming up with the uh, source of the finite element modeling as well as uh, simulation so as this topic you know getting a lot of interest nowadays because for the you know the safety of the uh, vehicles we coming up with some sort of the guardrail system why we need guardrail system what's the main purpose of the guardrail system so can you just put your presentation on the presentation mode all right yeah onto the right bottom okay yeah just onto the right yes okay can you yeah. see it now yes. perfect yes sir. Okay. yes sir. all right so this, uh, what we need guardrail system, why we need guardrail system, what's the purpose of the guardrail system? The main purpose of the guardrail system is reduce the severity of the accident involving vehicles that leave the roads. We have a lots of stiff objects on the, you know, the beside the road, on the side of the road, that we need to put the guardrail system in order to redirect the vehicle in a safe way. So, we have uh, more than 42,000 fatalities just reported every year. Uh, it's coming up just for the accident. And more than 12,000 of them occurring from the run of the road. You know, more than 12,000 of the vehicle run, run off the road. And, and uh, most of them, you know, the more than 12,000 people are dying of this, uh, of this accident. So if we have a sort of the good guardrail system, we can reduce these uh, number of the number of deaths significantly. Unfortunately, 1,200 of the deaths are reported in case of the guardrail system. So what it's shown here is the bad design for the guardrail system. So if we have a good design for the guardrail system, we don't have this much higher number of the roads we can report. So we are enjoying, uh, you know, this beautiful scenery. But, but what is important here is uh, these trees are a very stiff objects. So at the time of the vehicle, you know, approaching these trees, it will cause a huge uh, and significant crash to the vehicle and causing the huge, you know, very severe impact. So this is caused a very bad accident. So we need the guardrail and some sort of the uh, roadside barrier system to prevent such impact to the trees and any stiff objects beside the roads. So if we, if we you know that uh, going to the road with this condition, definitely we have to be more careful. Yeah, we, we, we have to reduce the speed as, as much as we can and uh, keep keep on the road, keep keep eye on the roads perfectly. We will see that uh, stiff objects beside the road just just attaching the road. So this causes also huge uh, uh, huge risk to the vehicles and their occupants. We see that such accidents are happening in the, even the most you know the world countries in the world in Belgium and also other countries. We see that uh, these stiff objects and this can be also the trees or can can be also the poles and any any sort of stiff objects can can cause a severe impact and uh, uh, damaging the vehicles and as well as the their occupants. Also, here in, in the piers, you know, the, this is the piers approach of the you know, of the bridge. We will see that these objects also are are very really stiff and causing also the severe accident to the vehicles. These are some places that we need the guardrail system in order to uh, in order to redirect the vehicle safety. 
What is this? For example, we will see the large training structure without any protection. So this, this will happen uh, when we, any vehicle could run off this uh, uh, cover. Actually, to be honest, one time also this happened to me and to my family, but we were very lucky and uh, that uh, we didn't uh, injure that much significantly. So if we have a guarding system here, it will redirect us from this uh, dangerous zone and we can, this can reduce uh, the severity of the impact and can redirect us to the roadway safely. Here you can see that, you know, these objects, these objects are also coming up with uh, very close to the roads and uh, they are non-forgivable. Uh, objects, so definitely will cause a huge impact or a huge uh, risk to the vehicles as well. It should be maintained by a guarded system and uh, vehicle, uh, when any vehicle approach these uh, objects could be redirected safely to the roadway. Also here we can see the embankment, you know, this is a very, very high, uh, very high uh, embankment. If any vehicle uh, run off the road, uh, it, it's caused a huge impact to the ground because it's uh, it's very high and uh, uh, increases the vehicle, increases the velocity of the vehicle and acceleration and causes a huge impact to the ground. Once we come in out with the guardrail system, we have to come in out with the nice and uh, clean and also the uh, systematic solution for for you know the uh, for designing the better driver system you will see that here normally causing from the bad installation of the end treatment system entering as well as the closing of the garbage system must be protected perfectly with a very nice with a very you know the uh, good designs these vehicles coming out to the guard normally you know the end treatment we you see that in most cities here, in Iran, in Middle East, in some sort of the world also I visited, the end treatment, you know, the first and end of the gardening system, it must be, it must be treated well. I will explain later into the other present, uh, other slide. You will see that these, uh, uh, these gardening system are not designed well, so the, the, the garden and the roadside approaches, you know, they're coming up in, inside the vehicle and, and, and this, the accident will be traffic. Also here, you will see that some bad design example of the garden system. We need garden to be deflected in order to, uh, in order to dissipate the energy of the vehicles. Once we're coming up with the, you know, the, uh, well, once they attach the guardrail system to the uh, to the piers, to the any steep objects, definitely the risk of the accident could be even more. Why we need to attach this together? We need some sort of you know a space to to guard it to be uh, deflected and to dissipate the energy of the vehicles and redirect the vehicle to the safety. So this could be no use in my belief to. Uh, to dissipate any energy, to get, uh, to absorb any energy and regulate the vehicle safety to the roadway. Because once, once, uh, once we will see other design as well, we have, uh, uh, when we approach into the bridge, also we have, we have to be very careful. What we need here is, uh, is a sort of the transition system. What is transition system? Transition system, uh, I will explain also this. We need a system to redirect the vehicle from the road to the bridge safety. Safety. Why do we need this transition system? Transition system is a, is a system that uh, increased the, increase the, you know, the rigidity of the guardrail from the roadside barrier to the to the bridge rail gradually. Once we have a guardrail system in the road, uh, it's a very flexible one. You know, once we 
uh, any impact is happening is uh, the deflection could be could be up to two to three meters sometimes. But once we come out with the uh, crashing to the bridge, the deflection could be almost zero. Almost, for example, maybe twenty, maybe up to ten to twenty centimeter. So here. Uh, here we uh, here we uh, we will have a very very intense situation here. We need the system to to increase the rigidity of the connection from the very flexible to the very rigid one gradually, in order to to be able to uh, to redirect the vehicle safely to the bridge. Here there is no connection here to, uh, from the roadside to the bridge. You know, the, there is a gap. And mostly, I, I, I'm, I, this is very sad to say, in, um, based on the, you know, the no knowledge of this, most authorities here, most authorities in many cities, they, they don't attach uh, these two together and they don't use any transition system. So once the uh, once crash here is happened, we will hear, we will see here, here, you know, I, I already showed here. The vehicle will be pocketed. We, um, some sort of we have a vehicle pocketing. It's a, some sort of you know, it's, it's a uh, it's a term that we use for the guardrail system. Uh, is a vehicle pocketing will be happen here, and the vehicle will be uh, crashed to the bridge, and it causes severe uh, severe you know crash, severe accident. So it's. The number of deaths and casualties will be different. Will be getting very high here. I'm talking about the transition system. Here is the is here is the one example of the transition system. You will see here um, for the for the rail, the guardrail system, uh, the post spacing is could be up to two meters, up to two meters. But when it when when it's got near the debris, the post spacing will get in lower. It's getting the, up to the, for example, half meter or sometimes one meter to half meter. Why why we need that one? Even it's coming out with the more investment depth of the post in order to increasing the uh, increasing the rigidity to getting the because here in the bridge we have a really high rigidity uh, so we need that system to to increase the rigidity of the transition here we will see that sometimes also you will see here the number of the posts here in in such design is getting High is getting lower, the spacing, the post spacing, in order to getting the higher rigidity and, uh, to when, when we are approaching the bridge railing. Here, also, we can see in the, in the detail, the investment depth also is increasing from the one meter, maybe it goes to up to two meters. It's a very perfect design of the transition system in order to uh, gradually increasing the rigidity from the roadside barrier uh, to, the, to the bridge rail. Now we are coming out, we talk about the geyser and treatment. That's another, uh, another main important aspects of the geyser system. Before we saw that the vehicles, you know, uh, piercing the vehicle, uh, guarded piercing the vehicles and coming up into the vehicle, and that's because that's because lack of the end treatment system. We need this some some we need this system. Some designs coming up with the Texas twist like that. They they put the end, uh, uh, in, you know, they put the the first part and also the end part of the guardrail system into the ground. But this may cause the vehicle flying over the guardrail. You will see that in, you will see in the in the, the you know the movies when the vehicle coming up into this maybe fly and routing instead of getting the more safety, getting the more even a higher, you know, severe crash. So we need the, the better design for this. It is, this is also coming up discussing that bad, you know, design installation of the. We see that uh, the postal, the postal uh, box here, and instead of you know this, and that's that's a very bad one. Is another 
Another end treatment here we see here. That's a very good one. It 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 caused you know it it caused the vehicle uh, it caused the driver not trusting the vehicle. But what is here we see that very bad because uh, because the vehicle doesn't have enough space to redirect it to the vehicle, to the road safety. Another one is a blot and this one. This is almost good. We see that some some this design blunt and flare terminal. And uh, we see that here in most cities, but this is also not coming up with a very uh, effective design for this one. This is very cost effective, but it could be um, severely, you know, the reduce the crash of the uh, crash, but crash and also uh, majority of the uh, garden system in most cities are coming up with this design. But in my belief, this may be not very effective as as this three designs that uh, mostly use in the United States and the Europe. We see here in ET2000, this one, and uh, also ET plus, like this one, like this one, Escati 350. These are after impact, um, rail will be, rail will be dragged into the rail will be dragged and they absorb the absorb the dissipation and absorb the energy of the vehicle into the dancer so i don't have the video but uh, for this one but you can uh, you can search uh, this one Scotty design 350 you will see that in youtube you will you will see lots of video that how nicely they they absorb the energy of the impact and you will see that there is no uh, severe severe crash with the happen it is just a very minor very minor uh, effect of the, this uh, this uh, scotty system to the vehicle directly impacting the system that's a very good design and causing the very less damage to the vehicle as well as uh, their occupants. This is fleet also, very similar to a Scotty other design. So, uh, Federal Highway uh, Administration, FHWA, uh, they, uh, they come to get different systems for road safety barriers. It's coming out with the traffic barrier, traffic terminal, crash cautions, bridge railing, signpost support, road zone hardware, and other uh, other utilities to help to save the uh, occupants and also the vehicles. One of the things that we mostly see into the in uh, in the roads are guardrail system. Most of them, and um, they have a different, uh, they have a different design criteria. One of them is uh, uh, coming up with the wood post and another with the steel post. It depends on uh, local availability of the material in some cities and some countries that they have available wood. Uh, normally they come with the wood system. And for the blackout, this part is blackout, and this is the post, and this is the rail, if you see here. So uh, this is also a uh, business garden system that, that mostly used in the United States. Before that, uh, in, uh, they're coming up with the uh, supply system because each four meters, and the, the rail, WD beam rail is, uh, is four meter line. So we have to attach, you know, the railing uh, together with some sort of the uh, splice. Uh, this splice. This splice, these splice are very, uh, we can say that this is the weak point of the gradual system because you are attaching these two together. And before that, in the, for example, 20 to 20 years back or something like that, they put this splice at the at the location of the post. But later the NGS system uh, introduced a new design, new design, and they put uh, mid-span uh, splice into the mid-span, you know, the between the post. And this is causing the um, the concentrated of the concentration of the tension 
from the pores to the middle span and we're causing the very uh, lower tension from the in the post and uh, they're coming up with a better solution for this one and it's helped to better uh, the guardian maintaining the vehicle better here we see that also the blackout with the root and uh, and also the crash test unfortunately I, I must say unfortunately because guardian system is a uh, uh, is a very you know sensitive sensitive area so for each design criteria we, we change we have to we have to do the crash test in order to verify the design criteria so and this is not something that we can do in every lab so some credited uh, companies in uh, in united states europe and uh, also i'm sure maybe uh, i'm sure even in india uh, and they are available to do the crisis based on their their uh, criteria so in uh, united states uh, we have a mash as well as nchrp that that define this uh, the criteria so what is the criteria for assessment of the performance of our system we have a three different main criteria for this one it's the occupantist factors uh occupantist factor vehicle trajectory as well as structural adequacy so all these three elements are consist of the different uh, uh, different subsections that all of this must be met from the criteria the the occupants must be safe vehicle trajectory the vehicle must be redirected to the to the roadway safely as well as structural adequacy of the guardrail guardrail must not be uh, must not be rapture and all must not must not be pure so it's uh, the guardrail must be uh, stay in place and we just deflect deflected not be pierced and not be uh, fractured so that's the point and uh, we have uh, also different Vehicles for different test levels here. Vehicles with different types, with different weight, uh, uh, crashed, uh, crashed to the you know crash to the guardrail system with different speed as well as with a different angle. So this uh, this angle, this different angle, different speed helps to verify the guardrail system for a different usage of the roads. Some roads, for example, in a rural area, we don't have much speed. Uh, uh, the vehicle are not very going very high speed because the design criteria for the road is is not that much high. So 50 kilometer it will be tested and if the bar will pass this criteria it could be used for aura but what we we test here is is test level three for the highways is test level three test 310 and also test 311 with the with the passenger cars are also the vehicle and also 2000p is a it's a it's a sample of the pickup truck with a 20 degree of angle of the impact as well as 25 with the 100 kilometer per hour speed so it's very could be very uh, huge impact and uh, it's tested the barrier system uh, perfectly this this is a design uh, criteria for both nchrp from the left side as well as the mesh for the right side you see that the because nowadays american use a bit uh, use the heavier cars so that's and then the and this gives them uh, this uh, requirement to to change the vehicle based on per per interest of their citizens. So uh, we see that the heavier car we're testing the heavier car with the new standard in the in the right side. See that the helicopter I keep get the higher center of the gravity is higher as well as is is heavier in the mass criteria so this mass criteria was um, mass criteria once is introduced to the uh, to the as a test requirement uh, most of the current garden system are, are not are not able to meet system this this design criteria because of the higher because of the 
uh, heavier vehicle, heavier vehicle, as well as the higher center of gravity. So it's caused the garment to be ruptured and not be able to, to withstand the crash. Uh, G4-1S is one of them, G4-2W is another one. G4-2W is the garment system with the post spacing, uh, wood post spacing, as well as the um, uh, blackout. You know, blackout system also is the wood. So this design, uh, I also, I, uh, for my thesis, for my PhD thesis, I coming up with the, uh, uh, with this uh, design to fix this and uh, coming up with a better design for this one to, to enhance and also to improve the design for this system because the mass system was not able to withstand it. So I, I, I coming up with, uh, uh, with collecting the data of the crash test that every crash test that is done in the world are coming out with uh, with uh, provide the directory of the old crash is see that we're coming out with the design system here high different high different in the impact and what vehicle exit uh, angle of the exit we uh, we um, uh, we collected all the data for a deflection of the garden what dynamic deflection permanent deflection and system damage moderate and the stability of the vehicle and, and for different, with different criteria. So once we, we collect all of this data, we will able to come up with the uh, with, uh, comparison of design. This design get a better, uh, get a better output. Uh, here, we see that we collect all the data. And it's interestingly, we, uh, we here, we come up with the different, uh, come up with the uh, analyzing and evaluation the results of the, all these crash tests together. Some some students always, you know, they complain why we don't need the lab to do the test. We, and we cannot. Uh, we, are, we need a huge budget to uh, to publish a scientific paper. But this this paper that I wrote in the top top, you know the Journal in the road safety is accident analysis and prevention. I, I, I spent zero for getting published this one because I just collected the data and compare all designs together and uh, come up with a different solution. And um, it's it, um, I never get into the lab before writing this paper. So this is a solution where we can, we can collect the data from the different uh, research and uh, comparing the, all the data together, what, what is similar to each other and the reporting, what could be the best and what could be, what, what, is, what is the best one for the design? This is the first paper that I published without even getting to into the lab. And, and this is another one, it's another good paper that uh, published in uh, an international journal of crash forcingness without getting into the lab. This is, this is the result of my first and second uh, semester of my PhD thesis. So I just compare the design what the other researcher done. I've done nothing, I just compare and uh, just report. I just discuss what, what could be the best designs. So after collecting all these data, publishing my paper, I, I've gone, yeah, that system that I showed uh, earlier, it has a bad design. It must be fixed. So I'm coming up with this to, uh, with, uh, with, with, with the help of the, some of my friends coming up with the simulating uh, simulating the crash test. Uh, I'm very thankful to uh, uh, the, uh, the Mr. Bullard from Texas, Texas uh, I University, as well as uh, Prof. Uh, Ronald Fowler from Lincoln University in Nebraska. They are very kind and helped me with uh, providing the data for the crash test and uh, also the vehicle, uh, vehicle simulation model because I didn't model this one, but I just modeled the garden system. 
So they helped me to, for, to accelerate my, my study better. I'm very thankful to them. So this is really, you, know, you can ask everyone to help you. This is, you can connect with everyone. They are kindly providing information if you are going to uh, focus on your education. And there are, there are always very kind people available in the world that can help you. So don't be disappointed with, with the very big ideas if you have in your mind. So I, I come to design, to model the world postcarder system here, blackout and connection, the pins and everything, the soils of the, that, you know, this post coming up into the soil and also the crash modeling with this one, with the help of one of my friends, uh, I'm in Tuba, I'm very thankful to him also. He helped me also with his LS9 modeling because uh, now uh, we, we see that uh, the, there are lots of software available, but LS9 software uh, is a very active, very, uh, very professional software for uh, modeling the dynamic crash test, LS9. We see that uh, the, this, this uh, you know, the report of the real crash test is be done by the Texas University of Anam and uh, Dr. Uh, Bula, uh, Mr. Bular provided me the data of this one. I'm very thankful. So what we done here is modeling the crash test with the same, you know, the nature, with the same, with the with the same speed and with the same angle of the impact. So you see that almost are similar to each other. We, we, we just model it, we, we prove the way, we prove, you know, that, that our simulation is working. We have a very similar output. So also the quantitatively with the, another software, with the R, we call that one RSVVP. Uh, that is that is be used normally for uh, for you know validation of the quantitative validation of the um, validation of the crash test because we have uh, we don't just quantitatively uh, qualitatively this is we call this one qualitative uh, qualitative uh, validation based on the you know the what you see here but. Quantitatively, also we need to uh, we need to validate this one as well for different acceleration. So once we evaluate the results, we, we found that yeah, the rail is the main purpose. The the splice. So instead of the eight, you know, eight splice, we come now with twelve splice, and uh, we see that this twelve splice. Uh, eight splice here uh, was not able to was not able to you know uh, safely vehicle safely uh, redirect the vehicle and the guardrail was rapture is a ten bolt see here you see here we put the ten bolt it doesn't work and uh, in another design we come up with the twelve pole, pole bolt at their splice and the vehicle was with the stand and the guard will withstand and does not rapture. So yeah, we see that, okay, these 12 bolts is the perfect one with the other design criteria for road, for the process spacing as well as the, uh, as well as the guard rail height. So we come up with a different modeling this one here with the 1.5 process spacing and the 22, uh, 28, uh, 28, uh, 28, and uh, garden height, we see that. Uh, 28 is inch, uh, I, I must put the universal metric, but uh, normally in the wireless system for the, for the height, they use inch inches. So 1.5 meter, we see that couldn't able, well, all your 1.5 meter body was not able to regulate the vehicle safely. But we see here the two meter with the 32, uh, with the two, the 32 uh, inches garden height was able to regulate the vehicle as well as uh, as well as 2.5 meter with uh, three, uh, three, uh, three, 30 inches, as well as 32 inches, uh, 22.5 uh, meter was able to 
redirect the vehicle safely. So uh, also we coming up with a statistical analysis, a statistical analysis, what, in, what is the most impactful results and what is the most impactful parameter on designing the guardrail? When we, for example, here, when we're increasing the, increasing the process spacing, we see that the acceleration to the wind, to the occupants, uh, to the occupants is much reduced because it's coming up with a bigger space, definitely the, the impact will be less severe. So um, I can, I will uh, share with you later uh, this presentation. We can use this presentation and anytime you have a more question, you can ask me to do. This is, we can see that this is the result of the two meter, uh, two meter process spacing with 30, 32 inches, safely redirected the vehicle, also, we can see here, uh, guarded systems, some of them, you know, the, the, number, the, the number A and B was safely redirected, but number C, the G42W 2.5, uh, 2.5 uh, meter process spacing and guarded height with 32 inches were not able to redirect the dice non safety. So we have to, both vehicle, you know, the passengers' cars as well as the pickup truck must be met, uh, the requirement for the test. Another paper that I published that we, uh, this is after I getting into the, into the lab and doing the, some, uh, some sort of the, you know, the modeling, the results published. Uh, we, we published the results and uh, you can, um, I can share with you later this paper. It's a very interesting paper. We discuss all the, all the criteria and all the modeling into, in, into the paper. So what we learn from here is guarded are used when the risk of the streaking and objects of the road is judged to be more severe. So we don't put the guarded system everywhere. When the road is uh, flat, yeah, and there is no severe objects beside the road. We don't need to put in a guard because guard itself is a little bit dangerous. So we have to put the guard system when the risk of striking an object on the road is judged to be more severe than striking the guard. So properly installed the guard will help reduce the crash and simulation taking also help to employ the better uh, better care because we don't need to, we cannot do for each criteria we cannot do the uh, crash test it will be very uh, extensive so we mostly uh, do the initial study by simulation we do all of this simulation and we uh, once we validated the simulation, we come up with a good design, different design, and once the better design, uh, better, we come up with a better design, the best design, def, that best design will be chosen for the real crash test. So this is how we perform. We are not able to do the all the crash test, uh, all the crash test with the, uh, with the real crash test. So that would be very expensive. And um, I have, uh, I have, I'm not sure you have my uh, screen yet. This is, uh, this is the modeling of the crash test that we done with the LS Dyna. It's uh, 1.5 meters, you see here, it's already failed. This is from another review, 1.5 meter, another one is failed. And this is 2.5, 2.5 meter process spacing. You see here, the vehicle safely redirected by the glider system. Another one is another view you can see here of the 2.5 meter uh, process spacing. This is all done by uh, LS Dyna, very advanced uh, finite element modeling. This is a two meter high with uh, 32 inches guarded height. This is also the most common guarded system in the, in the world. Mostly they use this design. Uh, but this one that we developed is, is a 12 post that uh, not been yet implemented. So, uh, the 
are lots of things we can do. We, we, we could we could do with the finite element modeling. It's a very advanced one, and every day is adding a new feature. And uh, I'm sure that um, with the advancement of the, this finite element modeling, we could uh, we could do a lot even more from now. And uh, for more. Uh, you can uh, refer to me to my LinkedIn page. Just search Mertai Soltani, and uh, you will find my uh, LinkedIn page. If you are interested to get more updates about uh, civil engineering videos, educational content, and everything. And uh, thank you so much. I'm pleased uh, that Dr. Dara and SEP University invited me for this presentation. And if you have any question, I am happy to help. Thank you very much, sir, for your insight into this, how the design of actual guide rail systems work through simulation and FEM modeling. This is... Uh, Frankly speaking, this is for the first time I have been watching, you know, the software using this FEM modeling for crash test data and analyzing the systems for the protection of uh, people driving the vehicles on highways and everywhere. So thank you very much sir, for your uh, presentation. Uh, I would like to ask this audience if you have any questions, we can just put up to this uh, session and uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Mahitarsh will be happy to uh, respond. Any questions? I guess, sir, uh, this is for the first time, you know, <laughs> anyone ha might have gone into so much depth of this topic. Yeah, sure, yeah. That's yeah. a very new, new topic maybe for students, but I would like them to know about this one. And uh, this is uh, the, how finite element modeling is evolving and how it can help students, uh, can help exp any experts in the world to get to design anything that they want. Yeah. So, uh, sir, I have one question from Aditi. Uh, She's asking which software was used for the simulation. Uh, it was LS Dyna, right, sir? Yes, okay. yes, yes, LS Dyna. And uh, one more from Ashish. Uh, he's asking uh, if any free FEM software is available on uh, this uh, this okay. topic. And, uh, yeah, yeah uh, unfortunately, you know, the, um, for this, for the finite element modeling, uh, they are... Uh, they are mostly uh, licensed one, licensed one that uh, available. But but for the learning process, always the student version and the you know educational one are available by uh, from their their software uh, producer. So you are always welcome to uh, to try their student version of this software to learn. And once you get to uh, understand learning this process, uh, once you join in the company, the, the, the license one is available and you can try even the bigger. But the, this license version normally are, um, are, are coming out with the less, uh, with the less uh, ability, but they are fantastic to learn. You can always welcome to, to try the, you know, the student version and reading their tutorial. Okay, so I have one question. Uh, uh, are, are this uh, crash tests uh, really been performed in, uh, I mean, in every country as per the norms? Is there any validation which has been uh, done from the software to this uh, real crash test? Yes. Which are being performed? Yeah, I yeah, exactly. You know, the, for example, in as far as I know, for in Europe and in the United States, all, uh, uh, for any design criteria, for example, when they wanted to put put the blackout, you know, this is spacer between the post and the ray. Uh, for example, they wanted to use uh, they wanted to use uh, uh, plastic plastic one. 
one company cannot be the new solution well, yeah so, so still is expensive and also the wood also may not be available so cannot be the plastic so the, uh, these plastics you know we are uh, it will be modeled into the software and uh, develop this one develop this one and uh, developing into the model and they will do uh, so they find a better design for this black hole for this spacer and after that they must validate this one they must uh, they must because uh, uh, they must validate this one with the real characters. Yeah, once we come in up with that one, after the validation, if anything happened, they can come in up with a different solution as well. For example, increasing the black hole, you know, the height of the black hole, height of the black hole, uh, black hole is could be changed based on the based on the criteria. But everything, unfortunately, that, that's the uh, that's the requirement. Everything must be finalized with the crash test that's a very expensive crash test yes. but uh, before to come out with the crash test we have to uh, do the final element modeling in order to reduce the number of the crash test yes correct correct because it would be expensive sir any idea like uh, a real crash crash test one uh the cost around yeah. uh, so just imagine, you know, because they are, they are not, um, for example, the cost of the, the region could be, for example, 30,000 uh, 30, US dollar, for example, for a very normal vehicle that, because the vehicle must be new, new manufactured, and the number of the, you know, test facilities and the, and the, all of these matters, all of the equipment that could be done, maybe, the 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 crisis could be more than hundred thousand US dollar. Each crisis must be even more than that. So I'm guessing about this one. Yeah, it's quite expensive. So I yeah. think this uh, simulation softwares are must to go on first of all, as you exactly. said, to reduce the number of real tests. In exactly. India, sir, yeah, in India, this crash tests, uh, the government has made it mandatory from 2015, but for this new automotive, it's related mm. to automobile industries for coming up with the new you, new models mm. of the car. So how, you know, uh, how sturdy the car is as far as, you know, any, uh, this crash is uh, related to that. So, uh, I think that there needs to be some some uh, guidelines related to this guide rail system as well. Thank you very much, Thank sir, you. for your insight. And we look forward to you uh, for more cooperation as far as uh, your association with SEPT University is concerned. And uh, whenever you visit India, you are most welcome at Ahmedabad SEPT University. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. It's a pleasure to meet yeah. you and also the, the students. And also, I'm thankful to SEP University's uh, staff and all the, the dean of the uh, engineering college. I'm very thankful and uh, I'm very happy to, to be involved in many activities, act, activities uh, educational activities, to share my knowledge. If anything I do, I, I learn, I'm happy to share with others. Thank, thank you, you so thank much, you, sir. Thank you. So, uh, with this, we too. yeah, thank you, sir, to to you as well. With this, we end our session here, and uh, please uh, do get connected with this uh, update, uh, this FT lecture series to get more updates on the upcoming webinars. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, sir, once again. Thank you, thank you. Have a nice day. Yes, uh, have a nice day as well.